Cincinnati chili or skyline chili, warm, vibrant, Mediterranean-like, and absolutely delicious. Developed around 1920 and has become an icon in Cincinnati and other parts of the United States. So let's make some up. So let's kick things off here by adding a bit of oil to the bottom of my Dutch oven, about a tablespoon, and this is over medium-high heat. Now in with half a chopped onion. And we'll just stir and fry this until that onion becomes a little bit translucent. And I don't know about you, but there's just something about stirring and frying onion. Three cloves of finely chopped garlic. And once again, we'll stir and saute this until that wonderful aroma of garlic fills the air. Now six ounces of tomato paste, and this seems like quite a bit, but you want this rich and thick. So I use one of those whole cans, those small cans. Give this a quick stir around until it coats those onions. Now a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, a quarter teaspoon of allspice, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon of ground cumin, three tablespoons of chili powder, and a tablespoon of brown sugar. Dump all those spices in. And we ain't done yet because you want to go in with a few cracks of salt, about a teaspoon. Same amount of our ground black pepper. And I keep saying in all my videos, I'm a pepper fanatic. I don't know, strange, eh, maybe. Then we shall give this the old stir until those spices activate. And oh my goodness, guys, this smell, this aroma is absolutely intoxicating. All right, next up, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, just for that tang. Another tablespoon of apple cider vinegar just to balance things out a little bit more. Now about an ounce or two of dark semi-sweet or unsweetened chocolate. And of course once again a stirring we will go until everything blends together nicely and you're gonna say my jeepers Eileen that's a lot of spices. Yes it is but it works and you'll also say and chocolate yes but it is so rich beyond belief. And of course, we have to add some liquids, so grab up about four cups of water and pour it in. You can use beef broth or half beef broth. Follow this up with two pounds of lean ground beef. You don't have to use lean, but I just kind of want to keep the fat off a little bit. Now here is the trick. I'm going to grab up my potato masher and mash all this ground beef up. And you're going to say, what? Well, Cincinnati chili is not a thick, clumpy chili. It's more of a cohesive sauce, if you know what I mean. And this works just great with the masher. And this is about the texture you want here, guys. It's kind of a blended sauce, if you know what I mean. Great over spaghetti, which we're going to serve it over. And of course, I'm going to throw in a couple of bay leaves, just for some good luck and flavor. We shall just go ahead and bring this to a burl, or boil. Now I'm going to reduce the heat and partially cover this. You really don't have to, but I'm going to. And let it simmer away for about 45 minutes. And while the chili is simmering, you can think, read a book, go have a sleep, whatever. After 45 minutes, our chili is done. And if it's too thick, add a little bit more water. If it's not thick enough, let it simmer a bit longer. But to me, in my humble opinion, I think this is just about perfecto, so we are going to go ahead and chow down. And as I said before, Cincinnati chili is traditionally served up over spaghetti or a hot dog. And we have a video coming up for chili dogs, but I didn't use it, but I should have. But anyway, go ahead and watch the video. So we shall spoon some of that ever so delicious sauce over top of our spaghetti. And oh my goodness, doesn't this look sensationally good? Of course, my friends, you simply must, must, must grate some of that orange cheddar cheese over the top and lots of it. Now, I'm using an old sharp cheddar here, but you can use the cheese of your choice. And to keep up with our Cincinnati tradition, we have to sprinkle some white chopped onions over the top. Oh, this is looking so good. Now it is time to taste it, but they tell me not to swirl it on the fork, but just kind of slice it and lift it up, which I tried to do and didn't do a bad job. Now, here's the thing. When you taste this, guys, a couple of thoughts go through your mind. You think, hmm, this is interesting. And then kind of a second wave hits your palate and you think, this is interestingly good. I mean, this is absolutely delicious. Nothing like I've ever had before. Believe me, my friends, you've got to try Cincinnati chili if you've never tried it. If the spirit hits you, follow the video, 
get the recipe, give it a try, and leave a comment, and let me know what you think. Hungry for more? Subscribe! <laughs>